Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Today is Tuesday the 8th of October 2024. We thank God for a clement weather in most places, but we are being warned that this possibility of rain later on. Uh, it's like the skies are leaking nowadays. Every day almost is rain. The rains that did not come in July are now coming at this time. So we know that we have to rely on God and thank him for small messes and that he knows best what is happening. Just be safe wherever you are. If your place is a place prone to flooding, make sure that you do everything within your power to make sure that doesn't happen. But if it does happen, make sure you have a plan B that uh, uh, you may need to evacuate to a place that you can have some rest uh, while the water goes away. Well, that just came to my mind this morning. Today, we're going to be looking at women with disabilities and climate change. That's one of our hot topics, so possibly that's why that came to my mind, to talk about flooding and all that. The World Sight Day is also another thing we're going to be looking about. Love your eyes, kids. Uh, that is how we are trying to coin it uh, this morning. So what is it all about and uh, what do we stand to learn or what should we learn about that World Sight Day? Okay, our top trending issues will come up this morning as well and then we're going to go through the papers to see what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. In the meantime, let's just take a breather and uh, uh, take the quote for uh, this morning. today is by Steve Jobs and he says let's go invent tomorrow instead of worrying about what happened yesterday let's go invent tomorrow instead of worrying about what happened yesterday that's according to Steve Jobs and a lot of people have said it in various ways today is what you have tomorrow is what you can create if you have the opportunity to see it yesterday has gone According to one of my favorite uh, animation uh, stories, uh, Kung Fu Panda, uh, the wise man there said that um, yesterday was history, quoting his words, yesterday was history, tomorrow is uh, a mystery, uh, today is a gift, and that is why it is called a present. So you have a present today uh, that you can use, to, you can unbox it and see what tomorrow will be inside that. So you have to do whatever you want tomorrow to be today so that tomorrow uh, we know that uh, eventualities will happen things that are unexpected might happen but it is within your power to to create a tomorrow that you will like you want to be a doctor it is today you go to school so that tomorrow you can be a doctor you want to be an engineer is the same thing you want to marry a wife there are things that you need to do now so that at the time that you're ripe enough you can marry that wife or when that time gets uh, you get to that time, you know that there, some things are on, in place so that when you marry, you won't be crying uh, right after the marriage, you know. You know what I mean. Uh, but the thing is to prepare. You need today to prepare, but you cannot cry about spilled milk, as they say. What has happened has happened. Use that as a learning curve and then create a future that you would want to be in. So whatever we want, even as a nation, if we want a better Nigeria tomorrow, we have to start now to create it instead of thinking about what has happened to us in the past. And that is why we always uh, do not like a situation where a leader comes to power and then uh, spends four years or eight years blaming the person who was there before. You have today and you have the chance of making a tomorrow that is better. So why not just start from today, which is the present in your hands, and then create a tomorrow that uh, posterity will be very glad that you at some point was at the helm of affairs to do that. So it also applies to your life. Whatever you need to do or whatever you, need, you want to see, start creating it now instead of dwelling in the past and in fact if you were poor in the past and you decide that tomorrow you're going to be rich 
start preparing about it now. Do not say, because I was poor, I will remain in that poor state. And if you were rich also, do not think that because the riches of yesterday, you cannot do anything else because the future might be bleak. The future might be different from what you uh, think it should be unless you keep up that pace and you continue to work and do the things that you're supposed to do for that future to keep being bright or to get brighter. So tomorrow is in our hands to create. Today is here giving us the opportunity, but yesterday is gone. So uh, remember the words of Steve Jobs all the time. Create tomorrow. Let's go and invent tomorrow instead of dwelling in the past, which is yesterday. Okay, uh, we'll just uh, go right ahead to the top trending issues. The first here is reverse crisis. Settle your disputes in court, Tinubu tells Fubara and others. President Bola Tinubu has urged Governor Siminola Yefubara, political leaders and supporters in River State to settle their differences in court rather than resorting to violence following arson and vandalism after local government elections. Tinubu emphasized the importance of maintaining peace and lawfulness, directing the police to protect public facilities and restore order in the state. The Rivers PDP and APC factions rejected the election results, which favored the Action People's Party, APP, and vowed to challenge the outcome in court. Okay, it's a good call by the president that uh, they should settle their differences in court. But we all know in Nigeria, whether we like it or not, the president is powerful enough. And that's why when this crisis began, at the very uh, beginning, uh, instead of the president advising the two parties to seek uh, whatever it is in court, he invited them for a roundtable discussion. And they had the dis this discussion, and uh, obviously it means that that discussion didn't yield any fruits. So if the, gov the president knew at that time that as an elders, and uh, as an elder, apart from the fact that he's the president, he's... he's He's a father figure to a lot of people in Nigeria, so he called them, he invited them. If it didn't work, he should maybe also think about using another approach, bring these people to the table as well, and talk sense into them, devoid of any political uh, leanings, any political affiliations and all that. The governor is in PDP. The FCT minister is, well, by name in PDP, but is doing a lot of things that don't show that he's in PDP and causing a lot of trouble. But he says he's in PDP, so the, the two of them are in PDP. But it doesn't matter because the president is the president for all. Even if there are 80 political parties in Nigeria, he's still the president of Nigeria. And he, he wants for peace to reign in Nigeria. And whatever happens in um, in River State is going to be a dent on his presidency, whether we like it or not. He can't say it happened in River State, it doesn't concern me. Like uh, an elder statesman uh, advised, Bode George advised, that whatever happens may, be, may taint his uh, presidency. Uh, everybody will remember what happened in River State in the tenure of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So if he felt the need to um, to call these people to order at the very beginning and give a lot of things that so many people felt were, uh, were, were one-sided. But even if they were one-sided, we were hoping that there was going to be peace in River State. And now there is no peace. Some people are talking tough. Both parties are talking tough. And this is the time for us to see the kind of finesse in settling disputes that the president has. I think it is not every issue, even though we know that the legal way to go is to go to court, but there are some things that uh, even the courts are advising us to have alternative um, resolution of disputes outside court settlements. There can be those kind of things. So I think the president should um, call these people as well, uh, even though they can't seek re redress in courts, but the, he should also speak some sense into them. He has a powerful hold on the FCT minister, as his own minister that he appointed. He can hire and fire, so he can talk sense into that one. He also has a governor who also attends um, the Federal Executive Council meeting. He's also under him because he's the president superintendent over every governor, no matter the, the political party in Nigeria. So while we are, await the actions uh, in court and all that, People are losing their lives, uh, properties are being burned and destroyed in River State, and it will take 
hard-earned money or the taxpayers' money to repair this uh, local government secretaries or in individual houses or something. Uh, so it should not be allowed to continue. The police are in the hands of the president. Uh, all the security um, agencies are in the hands of the president. And so he can direct a lot of things. Do this and it will be done. So let there be peace in River State. We should stop thinking about politics in so many sensitive cases. This is not about APC or PDP or Governor Fubara or Nyesom Wike. It's about the people of River State first and then the people of Nigeria. We should see, seek peace rather than war all the time. So the president, it's good advice that you are telling them to go to the court and seek redress. But it started at your table. You wanted to bring peace. It didn't work. Bring these people back to the table so that even if they are going to court, they will know that their father is watching them closely and they will they might just decide to drop a lot of things and you know there will be peace in rivers that is what everybody wants not who is right or who is wrong not who is this or that who is more powerful and who is not powerful but there should be peace in river state it's a very critical uh state in nigeria it's oil rich state is producing a lot of is giving nigeria a lot of money so there should be peace in that locality for the for the good of the entire country if not for anything else for the good of the entire country if a war erupts in in in, in river state it will affect so many things not just for rivers people but for the entire country so the president should look into that and be the father that everybody is looking up to our second top trending issue is local government poll. Plateau declares Wednesday work free day. Police restrict movement. The Plateau State Government declared October 9, 2024, a work free day and uh, October 8, uh, 2024, a half day to allow public servants and eligible voters to participate in local government elections. Police Commissioner Emmanuel Adeshino announced the statewide movement restriction from midnight to 6 p.m. on election day to ensure security and prevent potential threats. The government urged citizens to conduct themselves peacefully, while the police advised politicians to avoid inflammatory statements and cooperate for a smooth electoral process. Uh, well, it's something that has become uh, a part of us. Uh, any small thing is a public holiday for this to happen or that to happen. Uh, we should look uh, really critically at the elections in other climes. Uh, I hate the word saner climes. We are sane as well. In other, in other countries, in other climes, you find a situation where people, on your way to work, you just go and vote and then you, you, you leave. Nobody even cares whether, whether there's someone there watching you or not. This, it's so seamless that people can vote. Some people can vote from the diaspora. Some people can, can start voting early and, you know, uh, nobody hears all these hassles, vote buying and uh, election violence and all that. It doesn't happen in some other places. And if they can do it, they don't have two heads. That's what we, we tell ourselves in Nigeria. The person doing a particular thing doesn't have two heads. You too can do it, especially if it is within your reach. It is within the reach of Nigeria as a country to get an electoral system that people wouldn't have to uh, to lose their daily income just because they want to vote in an election. Now that this, uh, even on Saturday when, when the elections are going on, uh, shops are closed, everybody is not expected to, anybody is not expected to open shops, markets uh, are closed down, everybody is supposed to go and vote. And if you're not voting, you just stay home. And there are people who cannot even survive because what they get every day is so small they have to survive on that daily bread they are the real people who are asking for daily bread they're not even asking for bread for two days just daily bread and so if they miss one day from going to hustle as we say it in nigeria uh, then it is going to affect their family whether you believe it or not there are people like that who earn some of them even earn less than a thousand naira in a day and they use this to feed themselves no matter the number of people in their family, but they still survive. And that's the reality on ground. And then you're doing, you're, you're talking about the public holidays for people to go and vote. Uh, half of this population may even, not even go out to vote, but they're forced to stay at home and, do, uh, and, and watch others go and vote and all that. So we, 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 I'm just calling on INEC and all the relevant uh, stakeholders to make sure that we get to that point fast enough where Nigeria 
or Nigerians don't have to sit at home, don't have to be forced to sit at home just because an election is going to take place. Sometimes it's a local government election, sometimes it's a, a governorship election or presidential election or houses of assembly and the national assembly, whatever it is. But we have too many public holidays in Nigeria that productive time is being wasted. If we need to have a time for holiday, let's, let's put that together and make sure that people go on holiday for a longer period rather than just, you know, you give me one day, I'm not going to use it for anything. I'm not traveling to my village. I won't do the work that I'm supposed to do. I'll just sit there and watch you go and vote or I go to vote. Uh, something that should not take me more than one hour to be on the line, get accreditation, and then I vote later on. But here we are uh, making every process cumbersome. So we do hope that it gets to that time where we don't have to sit at home, we don't have to be forced uh, to not go to work and find our daily bread just because an election is happening. But this is the, the information. People of that state will have to stay home and vote on that day. Let them go out. Everybody should go out and vote because if you do nothing, you have also voted. Whoever wins, wins because your vote didn't kick him out and it didn't support him, but he just won. So if you don't like a candidate, go out and vote for the one that you want, you want, and you might just be surprised. But otherwise, whatever that administration does, you are also guilty. You can't say, after all, I didn't vote, because if you didn't vote, you are the one who voted as well. Your, 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 your not voting can also be counted as the people who voted for the administration that is uh, at the helm of affairs. Okay, the final top trending is Dangote Refinery Nigerians hopeful as Naira for crude deal begins. The federal government will supply up to 400,000 barrels of Nigerian crude oil daily to the Dangote Refinery under a Naira for crude deal, amounting to 24 million barrels between October and November 2024. The refinery's increased resilience on, or reliance rather, on local feedstock will reduce Nigeria's crude exports and tighten the Atlantic oil market, potentially lowering Nigerian exports below 1 million barrels per day. The NNPC will be sole distributor of the refinery's gasoline production, and if the refinery reaches full capacity, it could significantly reduce Nigeria's dependence on imported oil products. Uh, in a, a regular Nigerian will say all that now grammar. May we see where that fuel will come down. <laughs> That's what everybody's looking at. So what the, does this portend uh, to us? What, what does this show? What, is, um, what are we expecting if this happens? Okay, we know that uh, the, the pressure on the Naira will reduce a lot. It will reduce a lot. I also know that... Um, uh, there will be a lot of uh, anger in the Western world because uh, the, uh, the, the export and export that w was happening on the high sea uh, will not happen. The transatlantic trade that was happening may not happen the way it was happening because all the fuel we were exporting, we may not export all of them. At least 400,000 barrels is not a small thing. That will not leave Nigeria anymore. And the fuel that will be produced will be produced in Nigeria, and Nigeria will have so many other things. I'm sure crude oil has a lot of byproducts, and those byproducts will be in Nigeria as well. I hope that the Dangote refinery has all those things in place, where they use uh, uh, other other they use crude oil to do other things. I hope that he is also going to be doing that, and I, I hope that when those products flood the market, they will be cheap enough. Right now, we don't, trust, we don't trust the process because the person or the institution that should be speaking for us that was claiming that they were doing a lot for Nigeria uh, when there was oil subsidy, they were, they were paying the subsidy, they were the sole buyers, they were the sole distributors of fuel and all that. They were on the side of Nigerians. Now we're seeing clearly that they are not on the side of Nigeria. NNPC is the one that set a price and said that uh, they, bought, um, they bought oil from Dangote refinery for a price which Dangote said was not true. So just to make us feel that if the price is high, it's not their, uh, their problem, it's not their fault and all that. So we don't trust NNPC anymore. So who is going to protect us against if Dangote wants to sell fuel, uh, let's say for 900 naira per liter? Uh, we are hoping for that time where 
Protocol Refinery uh, will come on stream. We've been disappointed seven times in a row uh, about uh, the, because we were told that it was going to work and it's not working. Other modular refineries, we don't know if they're even operational. We hear a little about those ones. We don't know where their own crude will be coming from. If they're also going to be getting uh, from the NNPCL, uh, we are not hearing much about that. We're just hearing about Dangote. We have four refineries as a nation. None of them is working. We've been given dates and timelines. And like I said, it's been seven heartbreaks for Nigeria. And if NNPCL could lie, because that's the, the proper word to use, to, could lie about a price uh, that they lifted oil from Dangote refinery, then we don't know how many other things they can do, even when the refinery is come on stream. Let these people be clean enough. Let them be transparent enough. Let them have the interest of Nigerians at heart, and then we'll begin to trust them. So we're looking forward to a time where fuel, or petrol especially, and aviation fuel and every other thing will come down as low as it used to be. It is possible for fuel to come down as low as 200 Naira again in Nigeria. It is possible. Um, there are parameters that show that it is possible. But even if it doesn't come back to that, Nigerians are used to to adjusting to everything. We are like the proverbial frog that was put in water and, and put on the fire, and it kept adjusting itself and thinking that, oh, okay, uh, the water is warm enough, I, I think I'm enjoying this, until it got to a boiling point and it couldn't jump out again, and it was cooked. So let's, if Nigerians are like that and we keep adjusting, there could come a time where we may not be able to jump out of this uh, frying pan again or this uh, boiling water anymore and all that. So let's not get to that point. We are waiting for that time where we will look at our government and say, oh, thank God, we have a government that is listening to the people and not just listening, is caring for the people and doing the right things and bringing policies that are people-oriented. So let's hope that this Naira for crude uh, uh, is a good omen for us and it's going to translate into cheaper fuel so that people can be able to travel by road cheaper, People can be able to travel by air cheaper. Just about two years ago or three, uh, to take a, a, a flight from, from Lagos to, to Abuja, for instance, was less than 30,000 Naira. How much is it now? I don't even want to say it. Even taking a flight from Lagos to Oweri is something else. So Nigerians are suffering. If you came to Lagos to hustle, and make the life of your family back in the village to be better. <laughs> Point one is that you can't even go back for Christmas to see what, how they are doing. You can't even send money back to them because you are not getting enough. The transportation is killing you. Uh, rent is killing you. Uh, food is killing you. Everything is just killing you. So what cloth you, you bought in uh, five years ago or ten years ago is the one you will still be managing. And then... Uh, when it tears anywhere, I book it to the rescue. This shouldn't be the Nigeria of our dreams. The Nigeria of our dreams is a Nigeria where everybody else in the world will be looking at us and saying, hey, these people are from Nigeria. They are proud people. They are good people. They are comfortable people. They are satisfied people. That should be our Nigeria. And we hope that one day we'll get there. Well, like I said, that's the last top trending issue. We are going to take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.